Yeah, I, I'm, I'm here with uh, Kyle Anderson, like we said earlier. Uh, Kyle, what are, what are the plans for your future? What are, what are we looking at? Uh, you just graduated from University of Delaware. Uh, you had uh, your first child, and that's been enjoyable. Yep, yep, very what, what, what's his name? Griffin Scott Anderson. Griffin Scott. Griffin Scott yeah. Okay. And what, what are you and uh, Laura, formerly Laura Johnson, uh, and, and Griffin planning on doing now? So we'll be heading to Canada for basketball, keep playing professionally, and then after that, come back home, then hopefully head overseas the next year, D-League, NBA, who knows, doubt it, but plan on keep playing basketball as long as possible. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you be, uh, taking – your time uh, to be up here. Absolutely. Here we go. We'll start of the third quarter. Out of bounds. Hubs, Hubs coach cannot be happy about that. Uh, coming out within three seconds, turning it over. Not how you want to start a quarter. No. Especially down seven coming in. You want a good first possession. Yeah, my dad always said uh, that the first few minutes of each quarter just told you, oh, that is unbelievable to see. Tried double teaming him on the press, split the, split the double team with ease. Looked like he does it all the time, and then great finish in traffic. Great job by Stevie to come out and, and take care of that. Good D. Make him fade away. Good D by Kendall. Stay straight up. Play physical. Stevie bringing the ball up. Not tightly guarded over to Schmidty. Another sub for the Hubs. They've been subbing like crazy. Schmidt drives, floats, and they call a charge on him. Uh, turnover Stevie, or call. turnover uh, I like Mitchell. I like the take by Mitch. Oh, I, I like it too. I, I think that was a good idea. Sometimes they're doing a great job right now of stop shooting threes. Steve especially is attacking, getting layups, putting the pressure on, and I like that they're doing that right now. 61-52 in favor of the Norsemen. 7-10 remaining in the game. Quite a few Norseman fans out at the game today. Always good. a good showing. Always a good showing. Skip pass over to the wing. They're looking. Feeds it in. Evan guarding him. Evan's not in foul trouble, but they put it in. I expect Rochelle to do a lot more of that. They're starting to fall in love with the jump shot, I think, too much. And number 30 has been a handful down low. We'll fix our scoreboard later. It's 61-54 in favor of the Norseman. Kendall posted underneath, and they call the foul. 35 reaching in. We'll take all the fouls we can get against them. 5-4 to four in favor of Rochelle following. Five, they have five fouls so far. One more, and then they'll be in the bonus. Hubs, they've been subbing like crazy. They're a pretty deep team. Pretty deep team. I like that. He's probably thinking keep them fresh. Newark has five or six guys. They got to keep playing routinely. So hoping maybe at the end of the fourth quarter start wearing them out. Great play. On the floor. Sixty-one fifty-four in favor of the Norseman. Six, just under six thirty remaining in the game. Stevie taking the ball out. Completely different play called in by coach. When do you bring in Willie? Yeah, that's a tough question. I, typically earlier if they were making the comeback, but the way Steve is controlling the team right now and really controlling this game, I'd say give it a couple more minutes. And it gives Stevie the opportunity to make sure that he is controlling it. I agree. It could be huge for the, end of the rest of the season if Steve can get that confidence right now, realize really how good he is. Evan for three. No good. Maybe not the shot you're looking for, but he can hit that. He can definitely hit it, but up seven, six minutes. I'd like to see him either take some more clock or attack the basket. Schmitty sneaks his way in there, and they gave it to Newark. I thought it was off Schmitty, but that's what Schmitty does. <laughs> you need a player like that. Coach T's always talking, even when I was there, he loves players who are short, junkyard dogs, get their hands on every ball, and that's that explains Schmitty in a Little sentence there. Yeah, it does. And, hey, Willie just came in. Looks like he's playing the two-man, uh, leaving Stevie at the one. Kendall with a great showing just to get in there and do what he could. Even though the points don't show up there, he did a nice job. That's just a great experience, senior. Kendall doesn't need to impact the game by just getting points. He can get rebounds. He can help keep the team patient. He did a great job with Will out. Here come the hubs driving in on Cam. They call a hand check. I assume no shot. 
No, they're calling two shots. I like to see Camp. He's got such length, which is such a, a gift to have defensively and offensively. Sometimes length can be a bad thing because he struggles sometimes to get those knees bent, get low because he is so tall. I'd like to see him get a little lower because he's got the athleticism and speed if he really gets low in that quick lateral position. So I'd like to see more of that. First shot's up and no good. L looks like a timeout for Newark. He missed the first one. Full timeout for Newark. Let's uh, mark that in our book, and we have to adjust our score. We've got two extra points for someone in our book, and, and we'll always fix that. We take a picture of it afterwards. So, Kyle, getting back to uh, heading up, you're, you're playing for uh, the Windsor Express in Canada. Yep, yep. Only about five-hour drive. Uh, from Newark High School. Just across the border, right next to Detroit. So it's nice. Hopefully even some people who watch me in Newark will get a chance to see me in Canada. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, and, and I believe, so you, you're still required to have a passport because you're going to another country. Yes. So anyone who wants to come, get your passport. Make sure you have it. It's just real easy drive right across the border. The team I'm playing for is the two-time defending champ, so I'm excited to be part of that. Hopefully get another championship. And just overall excited. Yeah, that's the Windsor Express. Uh, you can check check out their website to the Canadian uh, Professional League. And, and I know I'm looking forward to going up and uh, seeing you as well. So let's get back to the game. Uh, first shot was up and no good. And now we have a second shot. 61-54, 5.36 remaining in the game. Norsemen are leading. Willie's back in the game. He's got four fouls, though. Another substitution, they'll stop the clock. Offensively here, I'd like to see some type of two-man with Steven Will. There, not many guard tandems can match what they have as far as speed and high athleticism. So either pick and roll, maybe get Will in the post with Steve with the ball. I'd like to see some along those lines here. I'm being heard. We can't hear Kyle too much. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm, I'm working on that. He's got to talk a little bit louder. He's not used to this. Thank you uh, to... Uh, Kyle's mother-in-law for uh, communicating with me. Okay, it's my mother-in-law as well. Always good to have wonderful mother-in-laws. I have the best. Absolutely. Mine as well. There we go. Committee's got it over to Stevie. So, Sue, if you're out there, let me know if you can hear Kyle. <laughs> Willie loses it but gets it right back. Two points. Nice job by Willie. Good attack by Will. Got to be careful. They were all setting up for that charge when he has four fouls, but I like the aggression. Another two-pointed play right away for Rochelle. Rochelle's doing a much better job as well. Stop selling for those, those threes. They got a little bit too much of a, I don't even know how you would say, but just started falling in love, and I'm really liking how they're starting to attack as well. Out uh, Stevie. Stevie to Willie. Willie for two. That's a long two. Ass assist Stevie. Nice play Great to movement. 21. He'll hit that three. No good. Rebound, Willie. Great movement. I'm guessing that was a design play. Just got a wide open shot off their zone. Yep. schmidt has got it. Looking in. Newark does not have to hurry for anything. 65-57. Four minutes remaining. Evans got the ball. Looks over. Skips it over to Stevie. That was a little bit lazy. Could have been stolen there. Willie trying to draw the foul. No good. That's a turnover. schmidt with a near block behind. And then he gets the defensive rebound. There's Schmitty all over the court. Cameron's got contest, the ball. Contest and still get the rebound. Not many players can do that, so great job by Schmitty. Not many, not many. Willie playing two, Stevie going one. Just got commentating from coach's wife that everyone could hear. Kyle now. <laughs> nice feed by Willie. Evan with a two-point, and it looks like Rochelle is taking a timeout. 67-57, full timeout. Let's uh, make sure we mark that in the book. Let's see what our timeout situation is. Uh, Rochelle has used a total of uh, four timeouts. It looks like they have one timeout remaining. Newark's used three timeouts that we've got recorded, uh, so that means they have two remaining. Uh, so 
In, in, in case people didn't hear you, where what what's going on now with you, Laura, and uh, and your son, uh, Griffin? What where were you guys heading? We were going to Canada, playing the NBL National Basketball League of Canada. Play professionally, so I'll be heading there just uh, beginning of December, which. It's disappointing because I want to be able to make it to a home game for Newark, be able to see that crowd and see that gym again. But will, will you will you be at that first home game or no? I will. I'll already be gone. Yeah, you got preseason uh, training to go up yeah. there. It, it's the Windsor Express, five hours from Newark High School, and you might have heard me say that earlier. You could hear my voice earlier, uh, but we're really looking excited, uh, looking forward to seeing you play and and looking to forward to seeing what you can do there. Uh, and, and then uh, where you take it from there. Exactly, I'm ready. So we've got uh, 3.27 remaining in the game. Norseman up 10, 67-57. Big story is uh, Big Jack is out with an ankle injury. Does not look serious. Willie's got four fouls. Evan with nice defense, walking into it. Rebound, Stevie. Great defense by Evan. Real good defense by Evan Schomer, keeping his hand straight up. Solid fundamental. Don't jump for it. Push him off the block. schmidt has got it. We don't have to shoot. We do not have to shoot. 2.56 remaining, so we're under three minutes. Willie's got the ball, closely guarded. There's a two count, got a count. three count. Watch that. Skips it over to Stevie. Stevie drives. Great pass. Nice dump pass uh -huh. to Evan. Great play. Great we'll play. give that turnover to Evan. I'm interested to see how Newark handles this press. I know I saw the second game, and then their first game I heard the press, they struggle as well. So same situation up 10, three minutes. I'm sure they're going to be pressing as hard as they can. I'm interested to see how Newark handles it. Norseman doing some tough defense all the way out by midcourt. Nice little drive. Good defense, even better defense by Willie. Rebound, Schmidt. I like what Coach T is doing, changing up the defense right now. End the game, a lot of teams try to just fall back, not make mistakes. Right now, Newark's really putting the pressure on them defensively. Great play. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I know that. Oh, look at Stevie with a huge steal. Great snag by Stevie McGrath. That is his specialty. schmidt has got the ball. He's done a nice job of containing the ball, controlling it. A lot of, lot of contact out there. And it looks like uh, we'll be going to the free throw line. This entire second half, it's really been, really been Steve's game defensively and offensively. And right there is just another example. He's pretty much everywhere. Him and Schmitty both. Steve, one of the best defenders in this Little Ten Conference for sure. So great quarter, but great half overall by Steve. Steve McGrath. He's shooting one and the possible bonus. He has eight points. That's his high for the season. First one's up. And just missed. However... It appears he'll get another chance at it. One and one. The Hubs walked in early. That's an early Christmas gift for Stevie McGrath. Chance to wipe an air ball off the table like it never happened and still get a, another freebie. It's got to feel great for him. Like what happened? According to the books, it did not happen. Stevie McGrath up and no good. Just a simple miss. 15 has it, drives, gives the 21. 21 pulls up, no good, rebound Willie. Norseman in control, 143 remaining, 67-57, up 10. Willie's going to be going to the line, shooting one and the possible bonus, 140 remaining, up 10. Willie had a tough night the other night uh, at the free throw line, but he came out last on Wednesday shooting four out of four. Yeah, free throws, I mean, beginning of the season, especially not used to that pressure yet in the game situations. Used to being out, out on the three-point line so often, it gets a little weird when you're at the line in those pressure situations, but Will's going to have those all season. Willie's got 16 points. Second one, no good. That's a travel. Norseman fans are happy about that one. One thirty-five remaining. Newark up 11. Cameron Meyer taking the ball out. He's got 20 points uh, in the game. Cameron has it. Gives it out. Tipped nearly over the line. Cameron's asking 
And I, I'm the same with Cameron. You can't do that. That's not allowed. There's pretty much no way he could have tipped that without going across the line with that uh, angle. So. Any level, that's yeah. not allowed, <laughs> let alone Sycamore Tournament Basketball. Stevie's got it. It looked like they were intentionally fouling, uh, just slapping his arm, but uh, no call. Willie, and that's a foul. Willie, will again, will get another shot of hitting both of the free throws. That's nine team fouls. No Norseman in there to rebound because, well, we're not in the bonus, so they really could be in there and not that's worry true, about that's it. That's true. First one, make. That's that's just a philosophy style. Um, you know, coach has a significant uh, positive record on <laughs> on his win slots. I put I put a guy in there just because I I'm not in trouble of uh, possibly fouling. But now you still have a foul yeah. to give. He, he might also be thinking if he does go to the rebound, maybe fall slips, they get a five on four advantage, come back. You never really know. Right. So there, there's so safe. many other variables. Yeah. Seventy to fifty seven for favor of the Norseman. And a block by Stevie McGrath. He does it all. That's, does it absolutely all. Really just absolutely controlled this half. We'll get Coach Tolleson up here after the game. Uh, and maybe we'll get Cameron Meyer as well. 24. They call that on Evan. That's his fourth. Foul to give, so it's still all right. 116 remaining in the game. Skip pass out to 30. He'll pull the trigger from the volleyball line. He has no problem with that. 24 shots. Willie almost gets a swat. Evan with the rebound. They'll take their time here. They want to foul quickly, but they haven't fouled yet. One minute remaining. And it looks like Stevie's going to be going to the line shooting two. We're in the double bonus. Can't rave enough about Steve. I mean, you talked last possession. It looked like they were trying to foul that one. They called the foul late. He's been getting hit in these, these last couple minutes that I'm trying to foul, not even calling it, and still strong with the ball, finding open man. Really been impressed with him. Yeah, real impressive showing. Stevie McGrath with his first shot up and good. No shot. I agree with the referee. Yep. He stepped over the line before it got to the rim. That is no good. First one is a miss in the books. He does have that leaning forward, and that is a point of, uh, what do they call that? A, a, a point of uh, emphasis. emphasis yep. So he missed them both. Point of emphasis this year for the referees. They're watching uh, any uh, lane violation. Skip pass, and there's Schmitty with a deflection. Great work by Schmitty. Norseman are up. 14. 71-57, 53.7 remaining. Out on top, they're going to fire a three, I'm sure. Number two from downtown, no good. It, it's around, rebound, Cameron. They don't want to foul Cameron. Of all, all the people you want to foul, Cameron's probably your last one on the... Probably the least, probably <laughs> the least. Someone who could shoot as well as he does. But, I mean, sometimes three-point shooters struggle at the line. It's such a different shot. So, I haven't seen Cam a whole lot from the free throw line. Don't exactly know how he shoots, but... I'm guessing it'll be money. Remember, fans, you can check out all the stats, all the videos, photos, uh, schedule, all of that on NorsemanBasketball.com. That's NorsemanBasketball.com. 44.8 remaining, 72.57. Kendall and Dylan checking in for the Norsemen. They'll be grabbing. Who are they grabbing? Looks like Dylan's in for Stevie. And Kendall will be checking in for Cameron as Cameron makes the shot. 44.8 remaining. Cameron with the second shot. First one was good. Second shot is up. And good. Cameron was pretty confident of that <laughs> upon shooting. Norseman up 73 57. 43 seconds remaining. It's all but in the books. At this point, just make sure you don't get hurt for Newark. They still got some starters in there, so 
be smart, play safe. The thing I love about this newer team, much like our championship team we had at one state, you got five starters who all on any given night can go for 20, which Cam showed tonight. Before it was Jack, Will, now Cam goes for 20. And they have players who have really good at specific niches. You got a Schmitty who's really good defensively all over. You got someone like a Jack who's a great rebounder and scorer. You got Steve who just kind of the do everything guy. Will runs the team great. So when you have players who all cover those specific niches that need to be covered, it's really going to be tough to beat. And I think Newark fans should be excited. Yeah, they should be really excited. Dylan with a nice pass to Kendall. Kendall did not know anyone was coming, and uh, it was swatted. Uh, you know, Kendall just thought it was going to be a slop situation, and they yep. weren't going to put forth effort. But uh, kudos uh, goes out to uh, Kofi Pointer, six foot senior, who got in there and uh, and actually got a swat. And there it is, seventy three fifty seven in favor of the Norsemen. We don't know what time they're going to play, but it'll be 6 o'clock or 7.30 tomorrow night. We find out based on the game what happens today uh, with Rockford Jefferson. Well, apparently they just announced that the Norse will be playing in the... In the six o'clock yeah, game, so, so I'm not exactly sure why, because Jefferson plays right after this. So if Jefferson loses, apparently they still have the lock. Is what they're saying for first well, place. Well, they'll game. be two and one. So, and so maybe it's. it's uh, so when I was talking to head, maybe. Coach Tollison earlier, when I was talking to Coach Tollison earlier, he said that it's based on free throw percentage. He was pretty sure the tiebreaker, yeah. okay. and, and so. So apparently, 